Hello AP Calc AB students, Mr. Record here. We're going to be taking a look at our final topic out of Unit 7 that pertains to the AB curriculum and it's all about basic growth and decay using exponential models. So a lot of really neat things coming up in the way of a lot of different story problems. So let's do it, do it, do it. So what we've got here um, in our topic 7.8 um, is a, a brief introduction uh, that really kind of lays the uh, the groundwork that oftentimes that we, we've got this physical relationship, these phenomena around us that we could really describe using differential equations. And so you're going to see problems that um, connect to radioactive decay, uh, population growth. We have this thing called Newton's law of cooling, which is very, very cool, can all be formulated with an equation that will contain these derivatives and these rates of change. And so a lot of this might might look a little familiar, perhaps a uh, connection to your pre-calc college algebra, maybe even chemistry class, but we're going to really dive into the calculus behind it. So what is growth and decay? Well, oftentimes we will say that the rate of change of a variable y is directly proportional to the value of y. So in other words, the rate at which something grows is directly linked to how much of that material that there is already there. So if, if y is a function of time, then we can say that that uh, particular statement, the rate of change of y is directly proportional y to y, could look like that. It's probably the most common differential equation with growth or decay. Now I want to break that down just a little bit more and show you that it does have a solution if we were to solve it. So once again, if y is a differentiable function of t, y is always going to be positive. That's the amount of the material that's changing. And basically, y prime equal ky is just another way to say what I've highlighted up here in yellow. Then we know that the solution of this is actually going to look like this. y equals c times e to the kt. A lot of times, I will very affectionately refer to this as kect. I know kect is not a word, but that kind of is a nice little uh, mnemonic that you can use to remember the order of these particular pieces. Now, c is the initial value of y. Basically, that's the amount of y there is when t is 0, and it's not real hard to do. To discover that because if this t was zero it's going to wipe out that e to the kt and y is going to be equal to that c k is a proportionality constant it just has to do with the material that we are looking at that's changing and it's something that typically you're going to be able to compute and growth will occur if that k is positive and exponential decay will occur if that k is negative. So what I would like to do here just really quickly is prove this exponential growth and decay model, basically show you how is it that you can move from dy over dt equaling k times y to y equal kect. And then after this, we'll hit up our example one and we'll close out the video. So separating variables. Hopefully you still remember a little bit about that. You're going to divide by y to move him over to the left, leave the dy there, and what's going to happen now is that your independent variable is now going to be a t. So we're losing x. We will not deal with x as our independent variable like we were. Now these are story problems related to time, so anticipate lots of y's and t's. From this point, we can integrate both sides. You've seen the integration of 1 over y many times, so you're comfortable with that hopefully being natural log of the absolute value of y. And the integration of k with respect to t would be k times t, constant times the variable. And then don't forget your integration constant there. Now, I know that that's not quite what quite looking like y equals c e to the kt power, but we have to solve it for this y. So we can exponentiate both sides. Hopefully you remember that e to the natural log is always going to be canceling out. So you're going to get absolute value of y. 
equaling e to the kt. But because I have a plus here, you can break that down into a multiplication with another base e of that c power. Now some really cool things begin to happen. The absolute values do not have any bearing in this question because innately we know that y is already going to be a positive value. And the e to the c is just going to become another constant. It just sort of transforms into a constant c. Now I do want to tell you that the c that you have here and the c that we had here are very likely not going to be the same thing. So I don't know, maybe I could put a little one subscript there so that this C doesn't have any subscript that makes it match that just a little bit better. Uh, but they won't be the same nonetheless. And then we have our KT power and boom, there's our Y equal KECT. Now, if you really pay attention to this, I will not see any reason why you would have to start your problems like this. If you know that the differential equation is given to you in this model, you can bypass all this work and basically let that be your first step. Let's take a look at our example. It says here, the average rate of y is proportional to y. Uh, when t is 0, y is 2. When t is 2, y is 4. What is the value of y when t is equal to 3? OK, so what we're going to do here is, first of all, make a determination about, is this a y equal k uh, kect kind of problem? And again, if we just simply read through the problem, the rate of y is proportional to y. That's all the evidence that we need. That means that y equals c e to the k t power, and you've bypassed a whole bunch of steps of work, all of those steps that I just showed you in that little proof on that box in the previous page. Now you're going to be given a pair of initial conditions. You will know here that when t is 0, y is 2. Well, that's just the ordered pair 0, 2. And the initial condition here, 0, 2, is going to help you find the value of c. So when we revisit this, we're going to let y be 2, and we're going to let the t be 0. OK, well, k times 0, of course, is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So c is equal to 2. And so therefore, we know so far our equation is taking shape. It's 2 e to the kt. The problem with that is that we still can't do a whole lot with it until we know what the value of k is. And if you look long term, our actual question is, well, what is the value of y when t is equal to 3? So we're going to have to figure out what this k is before we have any chance of plugging in 3 for t. Well, lo and behold, that is exactly what the point 2, 4 is going to be used for. So if we use this other condition, that's going to enable us to find the value of k. So let's take a look at that. We would have y equaling, oops, nope, y is going to be changed to a 4, 4 equaling 2e to the 2 times k power. Notice we plug 2 in for the t here. Remember, this ordered pair is t comma y. All right, well, we divide both sides by 2, and then we discover that we're going to have to take the natural log of both sides to free up this exponent. So the natural log of 2 would be equivalent to the natural log of e to the 2k. At this point, the natural log of 2 drops down. The 2k will jump out in front of the natural log of e. And we all know that the natural log of e is 1. And so 2k is natural log of 2, which means that k is 1 half the natural log of 2. You could write it like that. There's other ways that you could express it, like natural log of the square root of 2 would also work as well. And so at this point, we officially have, therefore, our final form. 
2e to the k times t, where k is either one of these forms. I'll go with the 1 half ln of 2 for right now. And all of that would be multiplied by t. Now it turns out that we're going to be able to plug 3 in for t. And I think that we're going to be able to do a little bit of this, say, without the use of a calculator once it gets rough maybe we'll have to change our mind otherwise let's see what we've got here when we let t be 3 y would be and you know what let's use some good notation here this time i'm really determining y of 3 up here maybe even a better way to express this equation is if we dressed it up in his formal sunday clothes y of t equal you don't have to do that, but it is kind of a nice presentation. So y of 3 would be 2e to the 1 half ln of t 2 times 3, which basically means that the 3 would multiply by the 1 half, something like that. And I would say at this point, you could, you could leave this uh, as he is. Um, a lot of it just depends on maybe this is a multiple choice question and you look at the answer choices and there's not a single E among the choices and you panic and you think, wait a minute, did I do something wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. You just didn't simplify it enough because if you see this E raised to the LN, that means that there's a good chance that those things could cancel away. But we can't do that until the exponent 3 over 2 takes hold, right? The coefficient of a natural log becomes the exponent. Now, 2 to the 3 halves is just, what, the square root of 8. And the e and the ln would cancel, and you have 2 times the square root of 8. Now, that can be reduced even further to 2 times 2 square root of 2, which is 4 square root of 2. And maybe this is one of the answer choices. So you've got to be on top of your logarithm exponential simplification game there. Um, and if you practice it, I have no doubt that you, you won't be. Uh, if you're wondering, this is going to approximate to be about 5.6 uh, to uh, 5.7 to be precise. And the reason that I bring that up is that if we look at this graph of our equation, we can see that the points 0, 2 is indeed on there. Maybe I should make that purple because that's the color that I introduced that point initially. And then we had the point 2, 4, which is in green right here. And then when we plugged x or t, I should say, for 3, we got this value. Looks like up here that's about 5.6, and that seems fairly reasonable. All the while, I would bet, yep, this is definitely exponential growth as we see. So there's your first look at a somewhat story problem version, uh, although it doesn't have any real world context. But that's about to change because all of the remaining videos that we have for you in, in topic 7, 8 uh, are all going to relate to some real world topics that might be a bit interesting. Hope you enjoy them. Be sure to check them out. If you like what you're seeing, be sure to subscribe and always tune in to our videos. We'll see you next time.